Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today, um, see, so notice that the number jumped from, um, <laughs> and chapter, well, a few things. This was supposed to be chapter eleven and like section three, but it went back to ten, section seven, and that's because as I was going through and looking at what um, we did here, we had IO reader, um, IO writer in chapter ten. And then for 11, we call it IO Writer. But there's so many other things that we're gonna be doing that I just decided, you know what, let me just continue at chapter 10. So instead of going to chapter 11, section one with IO Reader, it's gonna be chapter 10, section five, IO Reader, and then part one. And then IO Reader part two is section six, chapter 10, okay? And now we are chapter 10, um, section seven, um, and we're not going to be doing the reader alone because we kind of look at a reader already and implement um, implement everything um, using five and section five and six. So here we're going to implement what I'm going to call um, actually not data store but mem store, and so we're going to implement a memory store, and what that is, it's going to combine everything we've learned so far about the reader and the writer. And so, what is the mem store? Well, implement a file like, file like is in quote there, in memory storage engine, right? We can call it mem store. And what are the operations we're gonna support? We're gonna support size, you know, you can ask it, hey, how many um, bytes do you, have you stored? Um, is it empty? Um, you know, I mean, sure, you can say how many bytes, and if you get zero, um, you know, it's empty. Another way, convenient sugar-coated method is to just have a method called is empty so you can just check that and so you can call it directly in a conditional without having to compare it to zero and then we of course going to implement io writer because this is like a file like memory storage so you should be able to write some bytes instead and the only reason why it's in memory but it operates like a file is that we don't want to talk about how to open files in the file system and write to files and read from files so we're going to put everything in memory and of course, it's gonna be. It's also gonna support read, and no good um, type is gonna be complete without you implementing the stringer interface, interface, which is what we have seen a number of times. So this is gonna be sort of long-ish. So let's get to it. And so I'm gonna save this. And so if you look in my um, parent directory here for chapter, I'm in section seven here, directory. And the parent you see I rename it accordingly so um, instead of these two and these three being in chapter 11 they're now in chapter 4 so I'm gonna go back and probably re-encode those videos with new slides because I've already fixed the slides here but oh well we shall see all right so let's get to coding so code and bring up my code editor and uh, oh all these things da, 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 da. All right, so it's empty, and so we're gonna start off sort of as usual. And instead, instead of creating a file though, I'm gonna create a directory. I'm gonna create two of them actually. So I'm gonna create a directory called CLI, and then I'm gonna create another di directory, not that file. I'm gonna create another directory or folder here called um, memstore, okay, MS. Now why am I creating these two directories? Well, because our code is gonna be getting more and more before we even finish with this example, and pretty long, it's going to be hard to manage in one file. So um, it's good to start breaking things out. And so our memory storage engine is sort of separate from how we use it. You know, we could use it um, through a HTTP client or a CLI command line client. So this idea of creating a directory called CLI help us represent um, represent that idea. So in CLI, we're going to of course have our main that go, and then here we can say package main and our func main and you know we're doing fmt that um, print len and we're doing demo um, mem storage um, you know whatever right and so that's it for now and of course we can say go run um, cli well actually you can cd into the cli directory and we can say go run main and that's going to work as we expect Okay, so what is inside of this ms directory, which is our memory storage, right? So here we can create a new file, 
And if you remember, uh, we had this function. We have size. And so let me just copy those. I'm going to copy that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, file here. And I'm going to call it ms.go. And I'm going to say package ms. And then I'm going to say we have um, you know type. And so those are operations. So that seems like it should be an interface, right? So now we need um, sort of set of function we're going to implement. Those are a set of operations. So we should put that in an interface. So we could call it, um, you know, those like look like file-like operation, but for us we can just call it memstore operations. Okay. And so is an interface. And so let's stick our functions in there. And so we had string, you know, blah blah. And notice how um, here I don't have to specify the writer, um, the, the actual function I'm going to implement, the methods, I could just put this instead. And so um, this is OK. Um, I mean, I didn't have to be explicit about it. I could just simply, it says, um, I'm going to do you know the right function. And then it's going to take a slice of um, p, slice of byte and then return, you know, n, int, and then error, error. But now I have to go look up what that interface, the method there is, instead of me just typing it here. Okay? Uh, what is this complaining? Okay, so I'm not going to... Um, error. Error. All right. I actually try fixing my editor, and I still can't forget what the problem is. This there is telling me at all, since this is capital M, it's being exported, exported, and we not want it to be exported because we're going to use it from be using it from main. So it's saying I should have a comment, and so we're going to say memstore operation defines the valid operation for a mem for a file like file file like object. Let's just say. Okay, and let me see. I'll just expand this. All right, so that's good. So now we have um, some operation. Now um, let's define the type. So type mem store, All right? And it's struct. And what are we going to have in there? Well, we need to keep track of how many bytes we use. So um, Definitely, we're going to be storing stuff in a buffer because um, we this is in memory. So we're going to use a byte buffer. And that's easy because since we're going to be writing bytes, it makes sense for us to just store things in bytes. Or we're going to read them from bytes. So there's a storage in a byte buffer. And um, hmm, that's probably all we need for now, right? Because everything else, we could derive everything else we need from um, just this. We can derive home with the size, how many bytes by doing length. And of course, we can do anything else we want with just this one type. Okay, so that looks good. And so again, let's put a comment on here and say memstore is um, an implementation memstore operation. Okay, good. All right, memstore implements, you know, this guy. All right, so that's fine. All right, so what else do we need? Well, we need implementation for size and so on. So let's do that. So um, font, and we can do a receiver on memstore, and we're going to say that size return int, and it just return length of um, r.buffer, right? So that's that. And we also need is empty. So font receiver mem store um, is empty and um, it returns bull and we can return so instead of having the user do the test we can return zero is equals to length of um, r that buff okay um, all right seems like thing we can even reuse our function here if we wanted to um, like r that size you know, so this is equals to r that size, 
and that means that uh, if we ever change how this length is calculated here, we don't have to change it in two places. All right, the next function we need is write, read, and stringer. So again, we, take, we have this directory here. What I'm gonna do, these functions were really small, so I put them right here, but the other ones, they're not that big either, but I'm, the other ones, I'm going to put them in here. So I'm gonna go um, string.go, and I'm gonna implement the stringer one here. So package ms again. And I'm gonna say func receiver of mem store and then string function returning a string and I'm gonna say return uh, what do we want to return? Let's do fmt that s print f oh, faithful here and the type is percent t. Well we can calculate it. We know what type it is, but I want to make this string a little bit short, so um, I'm gonna type this and size is percent v and then length of uh, where we have size uh, what else do we want um, the actual buff um, the actual contents of the buffer for example so buff colon percent v and so close parentheses and then we just need r that okay length um, r that size we can calculate that. Um, what else? Oh, we need R itself to get the type. And then finally, R.buff. Okay? And so that should give us our implementation of the string function, uh, string method. And then the next one we want is write. So let's do write.go. And we can do package again. And we're going to do font and we want to be able to write so we want to make changes to the underlying structure so even though we can do a receiver on mem store we know that we're going to do a pointer right to that receiver well actually we don't even have to copy the whole thing because we only have a pointer to a um, data structure so um, to sorry to the underlying um, see the underlying, um, but let's just make sure so because if we have to change the size, grow the, the 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 buffer, we might have to overwrite it. And if we have a copy of the buffer, then we're not going to make it change to the original one. So let's just take a pointer to mem store, and we can do the right function. And so that looks like p is a slice of bytes, and we return and int and error error interface and so what does this look like well we don't expect this to fail for now okay so whatever we are given to write we are going to write it completely we can just keep growing our buffer to write that so we're going to return the length of p which is what we're given nil no error in terms of writing again when we say write when I use user user interface, remember this is a file-like data structure, and so when they have a mem store and they say write and give it some bytes, we're gonna take that byte and the byte we hold onto those bytes, right? Because they're writing to us. We're pretending like pretending we're a file. So um, how are we gonna write into this buffer? Well, this is what I was talking about. If we do r that buff, right? We have to grow our grow our buffer. Is equals to append we can do it this way, append. Um, but if we do it this way, and uh, we do r that r that buff, we can only append a byte at a time, right? Um, so we don't want to do that. So instead, what we're gonna do is something else. We're gonna cheat a little bit and say temp is equals to make a slice of bytes. And how big should a slice of byte be? Well, it should be big enough to hold whatever is in r.buff plus whatever we're trying to write. So it should be big enough to do length of r.buff plus length of p. And since I have p calculated twice here, I'm just gonna calculate once and say l colon is equals to length of p. That's just gonna, I don't know long um, how exactly Golang implement this calculation. So 
Uh, maybe it might just be a lookup, so it's not very computationally intensive. So, but still, why not? We're doing it multiple times, so we might as well just do it once. So now that I have a temporary buffer that's big enough to hold um, what's in my R that buffer, and that's why I'm passing a pointer here because now I need to modify what this value, this field here of R. And if it was a copy, I wouldn't be able to do that. So at the end of doing any copy, I could say R that buff, right, is equals to temp. So I override um, what R that buff was pointing to the slice. But right now, as that is just an empty big buffer so we have to copy our stuff in it so we're going to copy into temp right and of course we know this is going to be temp from the beginning of the, the buffer but and this is a full slice to the same buffer um, thing so we just do copy from r that buff okay so we copy what is in there first then we do a second copy of um temp and then we slice it at this point you know um, so we do length of r dot buff colon and to the end of the rest of the buffer and then we copy in p does that make sense um, I could use the return value of copy and just pass that here um, so either way it works so now um, so we can say n colon equals and then just slice this at n okay and so now we're copying in those two values and we update our r dot temp golang is going to clean up this and we're done with copying now let's do our read function so read and so the advantage of having all these little little functions here, um, all these files, is that in each file you can just focus on writing one function. You can later on we're going to talk about testing. You can test one file at a time, and so you don't have this very long file that you have to, um, you know, work on. So func receiver, and so we're going to be reading. And again, we want to mod modify. Well, we're going to see if we want to modify the online thing. But for now, we're going to say no. We don't want to modify it because we have to decide whether or not when reading out from the buffer modifies it and so if we have a file and we read from it we wouldn't want to modify it so no I, I think we should just do um, we should just read out um, from the buffer and never be able to modify the buffer we, we don't destroy any data in it to speak and we wouldn't be able to do that for a file and this is a file like interface so p again um, a slice of byte and we were going to return n int and then error error interface okay and similarly what we want to do is check and make sure that if we're going to copy out something to p well let's just do this it's valid for someone to create an empty slice and pass it to us and if they do we just don't copy anything into it and so we're going to treat it just like the append function and so on operate they don't really throw error if you do that so we're going to say if um you know um, oh, we could just copy into the, the buffer. So we're going to say n colon equals to copy from um, r that buff or destination. So we want to copy into the destination p and we copy r that buff from r that buff. Okay. And we know that this is safe because even if our buffer is much bigger than p, the copy function will only copy up to how much can be go into p. And so now we're free to return n colon nil. There wasn't any error. Well, what if p was bigger than how much was in buff? So we're going to deal with those in future version. There's also some other issue here where if we actually this was a file and we put multiple data, um, bytes in it, and then we read it multiple times. Let's say our buffer is a thousand. We've written multiple times, right? And we've written a thousand bytes. So now in our mem store here, we had a thousand bytes. And then we copy out only 10. And then we call, um, sorry, we call read. And we pass a buffer as only capable of receiving 10 bytes. We should be able to keep repeatedly pass call and read because we've only read out 10 bytes. So there's a whole lot more. There's 990 bytes left. 
And so we have no way of incrementing or determining where we last read from. And so this implementation is not quite complete. And so in the next video, because this video can pretty much go get a little long, what we're gonna do is see that oh, we have to add some more fields to MemStore. And of course, now we have to change it so we can modify it. But we're not gonna be modifying the buffer. We're gonna modify the other field that's gonna keep track of where we are in terms of reading out from this um, from our memory store. So if you like, you can try doing that example, but otherwise, I will leave this, well, let's complete and do a test of what we have so far. So at least we know that what we have so far kind of works. So what we really want to be able to see is if we have var test buffer, right, is equals to, well, I can't do var test buffer is equals to a slice of bytes, and we have one, two, three, four, you know, five. And of course, we want to be able to say var memstore is my memstore. All right? Well, I want to say ms var ms that memstore, and so I want to import um, ms that ms is the package here. So that's the problem. All right. So run this. Go run package main. All right, so as you can see, it um, we can dump out what we've written, and we've written successfully. Now we need to see if we can read successfully. So fmt that print ln and read buffer. And so we can see that our, whatever we put in, we're able to read out. So that tells us that how oh, we have successfully implemented at least somewhat just the basic read write. Of course, we haven't fully implemented read write because if we do another buffer and go back and read, it starts over from the beginning each time. And that's because of our read function is every time you call, it reads from the beginning of the buffer. We need some way to track where we've left off, where's the last place we read from, and so we can read from there. So that's gonna be in the very next video. Again, I'm gonna cut it here, it's gonna be too long. Um, I'm gonna edit out um, the part where I made just a terrible mistake and call this storage instead of store, and hence why it wasn't working, or where I was using ms here as the variable instead of m because it was overwriting my um, package name. Anyway, um, thanks for your time. See you in the next video. Um, continue to subscribe and spread the word. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, spread the word, and please hit the thumbs up button for me. Take care and see you soon. Bye.